Welcome back to the Good Morning Niger Show. We have our next guest with us in the studio. His name is Isaac Mohammed Paul, and he is a fashion critic. Today he's going to be joining us as we look at the fashion industry. I wonder if there's still a fashion industry right now because of the uh, impact of COVID-19. But of course, people are still making clothes. People are still shopping. People are still dressing at home. Even more interestingly, TikTok has given people fashion challenges to jump on. Hello, Isaac. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, good morning. Good morning. I should first start by asking, how are you? How is your mind? You know, knowing that as a fashion critic, you thrive in looking at going for the red carpet event and analyzing who wore it better and who didn't wear it better. And now there's nothing like that for you in Nigeria or around the world. So how are you coping? I mean, I must come. <laughs> I must confess, like you said, like being unable to like review um, events lately has been a bit of a struggle also like just yesterday i saw on tv um the reunion of the big brother and i was like oh should i like review this reunion just to have like content <laughs> you know because basically there's been nothing to like review out there but i mean i believe um like with the re recent innovations i think very soon we might have like digital events virtual events whatever so probably slowly later, I'm going to have something to review. So if we're having virtual events, now I'm an event host and I'm thinking I need to still come correct to if I'm going to be doing virtual events. If you are still 100%. going to be criticizing us virtually. 100%. 100%. Okay, let's talk about your journey into becoming a fashion critic. Um, so I actually started off in the industry as um, a fashion um, assistant, per se, for a fashion house called Von Couture in Lagos in 2011. Um, she's into women's wear and I started off as an um, assistant designer and I went off to become creative director under her brand. Then I started off as an independent stylist as of 2016 and I've been doing that up until last year where I started photography and that's been my major focus ever since then and I'm hoping to stick to that because it's been so profitable and very fulfilling in terms of creating and just living my utmost life as a creative. So if you had to choose one of all these things, which would you choose? Photography. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. Like whenever I shoot, I just always feel the most severe moments in my life. And I like to stick to that for now. For photography, I know that there are certain photographers that have different genres of photography. So some would tell you that they only do portrait photography. Some would tell you they only love to shoot for weddings. What would you say are your favorite things? Some is stock okay, photography. I'm a fashion photographer. Okay. Fashion and art. Or majored in fashion. So do you get to style the people that you photograph or you get a stylist to work with? Yeah, it's so apparent when I started shooting initially, I always um, enjoyed styling and shooting. But a friend told me, he was like, I think it's always best to like different shades, always have someone style while you shoot or have someone shoot while you style. And I tried that sometime last year and I felt it was much better when someone else is styled the shoots I was um, working on. So I think it's actually best to have like that division when it's time to shoot. So we're going to be talking about your two uh, major areas of or your two major professions, because right now you're a fashion stylist and you're a photographer and the impact of COVID-19 on these two and how you've been able to thrive. Let's talk about first. Um, you've talked about how as a fashion critic, COVID-19 has affected um, your work and your career because you're not there are no events for you to be able to criticize. Let's talk about as a photographer. Um, how has COVID-19 impacted your photography? Um, honestly, it actually did because prior to COVID-19, I had like two shoots the week um, the lockdown started. But my clients were not, no, even prior to the week, sorry, a week before the lockdown. So while the scare was uh, brewing up here, my, the clients of mine called me and was like, oh, we need to cancel the shoots for next week because he's scared things might get bad by then. At that, as of the time, we hadn't even had the lockdown here, you know? So, and barely 48 hours after then, the other client sent an email to say, oh, sorry, we have to postpone the shoots because he's thinking um, the scare for the virus and everything, he doesn't want to endanger people, the models, the makeup artists and all of that. Initially, I was like, oh, no, we should do it. It matters not, you know? But at the, at, so the second day, I'm like, okay, I think it's best we hold back because <laughs> we really do not want a situation where we um, endanger, endanger people's lives just to um, create, you know? So obviously, it's also affected my market. I haven't been able to, like, um, get a job for shooting in the last two, three months. 
per se. So, but I have been working on my own um, personal content for my website to launch next month. So I'm trying to shoot with the, obviously taking good precautions and just keeping it at just myself, the model, and probably my assistants on sets while we work. So, I mean, obviously you can't deny the fact that COVID has affected the industry in a very, very, very demanding way. So we all need to make new amendments to fit into this new life. Okay, so let's, uh, how, how are we now able to adjust? What are some of the, have you found a way yet to be able to adjust both areas, you know, as a photographer like and as a fashion critic? I mean, for my photography, I just feel the best means at this point is to keep it as restrictive as possible. If you're shooting, have just the most necessary parties to that shoot on set. Your makeup artist, your hairstylist, and the models, probably one or two assistants, depends on the scale of the shoot. So I believe to move forward from like this um, pandemic and to keep safe at the same time, we need to obviously take precautions and obviously we need to earn. <laughs> you can't obviously just lock yourself in and not earn because you need to survive. So the best way out of this is just to take precautions and to keep restricted persons on your set. Like that's obviously very mandatory. So I believe we need to make those amendments in our industry as well. I mean, also, it's also very scary because we really cannot tell who has the virus. So obviously some people exactly. are Exactly. You're not, you're not so, the show for forehead. Yeah, it doesn't show, obviously. So it's also something where we need to, I mean, I think maybe at this point, people need to come with their test results on set. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and the, the funny thing is, like, the tests, uh, you can't just, like, walk in and say, oh, hi, what's up? I want to do a COVID test because I'm going for a shoot. There are certain guidelines that you ought to have met for you to be able to do a test. So maybe if they open up right. more testing centers, then it will be more readily available to as many people that need to do a True test. That. True so that. then, and it's take like say 48 hours for the result to be out. So those are some of the things we might have to start putting into consideration. Let's talk about the fashion industry before COVID, life before COVID, the good times, and yeah. what it was like for you, you know, criticizing oh these God, people and tearing down the outfit. How was your own fashion <laughs> criticism working? So I did mine online, basically on Instagram. And um, and um, um, I majorly just um, so I never usually go for events. So whatever events I was reviewing, I deliberately never attended. So I don't feel any form of partiality or bias in any form. So I get the images. So I contact the organizers to probably send me the images firsthand, or I go online to source for images. Then I review them online and I tag the handles of the celebrities or uh, social media I'm reviewing. So that way they get to see it. If it's a good review, they get to repost it. If it's not, something gets to block me. <laughs> have, have they blocked you? Have they been blocking you? Mm hmm. A couple have. Do you want to tell us yeah. who have blocked you so we can go and beg them on your behalf? I don't want to be a bitch about <laughs> Okay, so now let's talk about, let's talk about um, having to review the, have there been times when you had to give a negative review about someone's outfit and this is someone that you had a personal relationship with, what did you do about it? it actually, I have, as a matter of fact, I think my second review was, so the, some girl went to uni together, she's an actress now, and I reviewed her and I mean, she didn't take it lightly. She actually came back for me on her story and she posted, you know, and, but it was something like, so I reposted what she said and I'm like, I mean, as much as this is a review, this is just my opinion. I mean, you don't have to get walked up over this. But at the same time, I will not be like engaging people who feel the need to come back at me. So this will be the last time I will be reposting this. But I just wanted to let this out there that I wasn't going to be engaging people. If you come for me, that's fine. But I will not have to reply you. Because I'm not doing this out of spite or hatred. I have nothing for you. You know, she was actually a friend. And I was surprised she actually took it out the wrong way. Because I obviously was not doing it out of context. I was just obviously reviewing the fashion and not you in person. I mean, they've thing. torn me apart before online. I hosted an event, and after the event, I had three outfits in my mind. I thought I killed it. 
And my friend, my Kill family calls me and says, don't go online. I'm like, why? Why shouldn't I go like that? Don't go online. <laughs> I'm like, what happened? And then I opened Instagram and I saw the blogs tearing me up because they said that my dress was what Yvonne Nelson used for maternity shoots. Imagine how <laughs> it was, you know, it was such, it's a bit of a downer. I'm speaking from the perspective of someone whose outfit has been torn apart. It's a bit of a downer. Mm. You're thinking, ah, oh, no, it's that not was, fair that now. I went there, I gave my best, and all you can think about is the fact that someone used the same fabric to do maternity shoes. And I really liked the dress. I thought it wasn't that bad. But let's talk about, uh, have you ever had situations where you came face to face with people you've criticized and they recognize you and say, you, oh my God, yes, how do you handle that. it? <laughs> So sometime in, de in December, I think, I went out for this event and a couple of people, so I met some stylists I knew walked together with the Arise show earlier in April. And she was like, oh, hey, come sit with us. But some of the girl I reviewed earlier on that month is some time ago. She was like, um, nope. <laughs> He's that guy who does the blog. <laughs> oh, wow. It was so funny. But the funny thing is, like, barely up to two weeks after then, there was an event that she attended. And she actually looked good. And I reviewed her. And she got to repost it. In my head, I'm like, girl, Aww. I thought you <laughs> Everybody you likes know? something that's been said about them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what you guys just try to dress up? <laughs> <laughs> just try. <laughs> Okay, uh, I, I'm, I'm happy that you, you've been able to go through that. It's not easy, to be honest. From the part, I, mean, I never forget Eloy Awards 2017, if I'm correct. 2017, yes, Eloy Awards 2017. It was, it, was, it was so terrible. But I can't remember any of the handles, funny thing, that gave me that negative review. I, I, I didn't keep it in my mind. Then and it's good never to... Exactly, mention. just look, look at them, feel bad, <laughs> and move on. Just move on. But what is the yardstick for determining what is a fashion hit? And I'm asking this because, honestly, if I could do it over again, I would still wear that same dress that people were abusing. Maybe I would have just waited until, like, a few months after Yvonne Nelson did her own maternity shoots to wear it. <laughs> but I liked it. I thought I was very comfortable in it. I liked maybe the angle of the picture was really bad, which I think was another factor. The angle of the photograph was really bad. So it made it look... A little off shape. I, I mean, for know? me, when I review, the three things I take into consideration the outfits, the image, which they could just at the angle of the picture, and also your glam, which is your makeup and accessory. So, I mean, at times, some people get all three right. So, at times, you get one right and you miss the other two. But I get imaging is so important in everything, in all of this. Like, you can wear the most stunning outfits, and your image is just going to make it look flat. So basically, for me, like I pay so much attention to my imaging as to my styling, my personal styling. And even when I work with clients, I make sure the image you're going to put out there is going to be like bomb because that's what people are going to see. No one has the time to come examine your outfits. You get what I mean? So the image it has to be perfect. And you always have to control your image. And like whatever comes out first has to be from you. Hmm. That way you put the best image because sometimes images from right it suck. I review a lot, I so that's something I need to do extra um, image for that particular outfit because probably the first ones that came out from random blogs or random sites they were the best of the worst of the image. So it's always best to like make that extra effort to put out a good image. Thinking about making image extra everything. effort, okay, making extra effort to put out a good image. Give us an insight for those who are not in the entertainment industry that don't know how it happens. How do these celebrities always look picture perfect? Their first photo, you know, how do they always look picture perfect? Explain, you know, the process that goes behind into styling and actually preparing for a red carpet event. I mean, obviously, before the event, you obviously had a month or two, two prior knowledge before the event. So you have to call your team together, your hairstylist, your makeup artist, your stylist, your photographer, because every celebrity or socialized should have a personal photographer. You have no excuse. And... They're so affordable, they're almost as free. So if you have all of that together, you create a mood board. So if you believe, if it's a theme event, like so many events in Nigeria, they always come with themes, then it makes it easier for you to narrow down your theme search. If it's easy, if it's a red carpet for a movie, because obviously going for a movie premiere or going for a movie award is different from going for a musical award. It's different from going for the after party. So like all of these things that, so I, I also review based off what I expect people to dress as, as per the award. You can't go for a Met Gala award looking like you're going for the Grammys. 
neither will you go for the AMPCA looking like you're going for Glitz Award or Sound City Awards. You get what I mean? They are all different forms of awards. You need to dress accordingly. So for me, if you have your mood, your team together and you create a mood board part to that day, on that day, everyone comes together to play their part. You take your picture. Most of the celebrities always stay in hotels prior to these events. You select a good location at the hotel, somewhere not too overly flogged, like the signature corridor everyone has shot in. <laughs> so you look for a good spot, you take a picture, and you release it immediately. Your Instagram is always the best place for you because that's where everybody goes to, to pick up images. You put it out there even before you step on the red carpet. That way, your photo no one announces your presence. And no one is going to help you control your narrative. Your narrative is up to you. So you just do what you have to do and get it right. So that way, any image that comes out that is bad from you, it's totally your fault. You can't blame anybody for that. So it's always best to control all of those things. So you put 100%. it out first, and the blogs will have carried down one before someone else will put another bad one, take it from a bad angle. <laughs> Perfect. But it seems like this is a lot of work and money involved, hair, I mean, makeup. The parents uh, are spending a lot of time and money. And so imagine, so I'll give you an example. I personally, if I, sometimes I'm not really, if I don't feel like I'm working at an event, going there can be a lot of a chore. So I'm asking myself, how much am I making from this event that I'll spend all this money? You get dressed, you do hair, do makeup, do uh, pay stylist, get a photographer. How are some of the celebrities able to manage costs? as regards putting I mean, together the perfect look it's a striving industry no doubt but at the same time in life you always anything you do they say you always have to do it at your almost almost best so you can't pan out excuses just to look a mess neither can you pan out excuses to look dumb because there are other people making effort to do it however with you know, so I'm not saying go rob or go do something incriminating just to make a point or leave. And at the same time, you really do not have to wear the most extravagant brands or the most luxurious brands to look great. You know, you can wear homemade brands and still look the part. It's just I up wear to homemade you to... brands all the time. Yeah, like I also wear homemade brands and I believe I always look good, I would say. So um, basically, like I feel designers should find people to work with to create a team i think another problem is in the industry there's always like this oh i can't afford you this season i use it this season the other season i don't know put someone cheaper i want to put someone more expensive so there's no steady team per se people don't keep a team because they just feel oh now i'm bigger than you or now i'm smaller than you whatever ways you need to be able to keep people with or without your finance they, they're still willing to go in for you because they know they're in your team they know which or without there's a team there and i think that goes a long way in building like that customer service relationship between the styling industry and the artists themselves so other than that i, I know it's really cultural to, to ex, um, afford all of these um packages on a daily basis for every event but at the same time to be a celebrity <laughs> you need to there's no way out because mm. you have like an entire fan base that looks up to you you have like an entire I mean, other than your fan base, there's a nation that looks up to you, whether you like it or not. So you need to represent a certain part, your looks, your so, attitude, your articulation. Representing a certain part, does it include not repeating clothes? Because we find that when celebrities no. repeat outfits and repeat shoes, they drag them on social media. And for those so who don't it, know what it, dragging it, means, it's like they're calling you out and attacking you for repeating your own dress or repeating your own shoe. Why? So basically, for me, I, I think repeating goes two ways. I mean, you're not going to do your movie premiere or go for MTV Awards or Sound City Awards in 2020 and repeat the same red carpet outfit in 2021 or 2022. If you're going to repeat that red carpet outfit, if you're good with keeping your size, it should be like five to six, seven, ten years after. Just so, oh, this was why I wore 10 years ago. Like, that's a story. That's a fashion story. Mm. But you can afford to wear something for a major event. And it's a fashion it miracle for... for some of us to be able to fit into our dresses 10 years after. <laughs> I mean, so that's why it's a good story because they're like, oh my God, that's from 10 years ago. So she still has the same, um, uh, you know, size and everything. That's perfect. But 
at the same time, but your day-to-day -day clothing, it makes no sense if you're going to say, oh, I can't repeat my clothes. I thought you <laughs> You did not a factory. <laughs> you did not manufacture clothes, so you could not afford to, like, leave a life of steady um, new tags every day. I mean, unless you're a rock star, maybe, but otherwise, you shouldn't engage in that life. I mean, people should've. are getting broke out here, trying to look fly and win best dress at events, and they're getting broke spending so much, not being able to keep up a certain lifestyle. But kudos to those who are doing it effortlessly. It's a lot of work. <laughs> and I feel that people should appreciate those who are in the entertainment scene that are constantly bringing them this content. It's a lot of work, honestly. It's Let's talk lot. about the fact, uh, life post-COVID. Do you ever think that life will return to normal, where everybody's clamoring for best dressed on the red carpets and the reporters and the paparazzi? You know, when you're coming into the typical setting, you walk into the red carpet in your stunning outfit and like 20 photographers or 30 photographers are there and say, me, me, post for me, post for me. Do you think that's ever going to happen again? For me personally, I've, like I've told all my close friends and relatives, I'm like, I'm, I believe in a new era. I think this is like a new time in life, a new era for us to like start all over again, everything we do. So having to have the previous life of everyone coming to red carpets and all of these things, I don't know how feasible that is for now, being that I believe there's a new norm. But at the same time, we humans, I believe, we also go back to the norm. We always go back to our normal lifestyle. That's a regular thing with humans. But for now, I'll say let's start getting used to things being virtually upgraded. Like everything is a virtual life currently. I mean, we're having our interview virtually. I mean, it was done before the pandemic, but it's now a thing where people have to be on Skype or Zoom just to like meet up or um, deliberate on things. So other than that, for the industry, I believe we should also focus on the new norm and act on it and invest in it. We're not going to ignore the fact that this thing exists. Like we're not going to um, ignore the fact that all oh, things might become virtual. I mean, there are virtual shows already. In Dubai, I think a week ago, there was a virtual fashion show. The very first virtual show was by some Congolese girl based in America, Hanifa brand. You know, so people are moving. Obviously, a couple of people are jumping on this new norm. So I believe we in Nigeria, we in Africa, basically, we need to also do the needful and hop on this new trend. Okay, before I let you go, Paul, let's talk about fashion rules. Are there rules to fashion? Because I find that the things that I used to uh, look at as as not possible before. I can now pull them off. I'll give you an example. The first day I wore an Agbada, I wore it with my heels. First of all, back in the day, women didn't used to wear Agbada. It used to look like a mm -hmm. masculine clothing. But I realized that I got my first Agbada and I loved how it look on, looked on me. I wore it with heels for the first time. And after that, I said, no way. Snickers, because I'm a Snickers girl. And I paired it together and it looked so good. And some people be like, oh, no, you shouldn't wear this. Do this and that. Instead, wear open toe sandals. I'm like, no, I will wear it to my white sneakers and I will kill it. And I will still look very stylish. Mm. So are there rules to this fashion thing? Should you know where? And if there are rules, what are these rules? I personally don't believe there are rules in this day and age. Everybody really wear what works out. Uh -huh. So long as you can is a way of life, you know? And style is the life. So if you have fashion, which is the way of life, which is the clothes, obviously, and style that happens to be that life, which is you, the person. So it's just like your religion, how is a way of life? or well, your faith belongs to you. So however what you deal with your faith is up to you. So I, I believe we should take that ideology into fashion. So there are so many clothes out there, but your style is personal. So however you interpret this clothes should come from within. Check what I mean. So I believe solely you should always stress however way you feel from within, however comfortable it makes you feel, how happy it makes you feel, whatever you feel while you dress up is up to you. You cannot own it to society or a friend or family or your religion. You must dress up to fulfill your utmost desire and your utmost feelings. And I believe that's like my best form of fashion and that's how I press each time I have to go out. I like even every time I wear clothes, basically. I was going to let you go, but you mentioned something about style, so I'm going to put you on the spot. Your top five most stylish Nigerians before we go. Five most stylish Nigerians? From where you stand, yes. Your top five most stylish Nigerians. I am one. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> so far to go. Um, 
So secondly, she, so there's a Nigerian actress called it, um, it, Indedema, Inidema Okoje. I think she's super stylish. I think she's stylish. Um, Von Couture, not because I've worked with her. I think she's like one of the most stylish Nigerians we have. Then there's this girl, I can't remember her name, but I posted her picture some time ago. She's super skinny. She's got like one of the best styles as a Nigerian, I believe. Um, I'm trying to call the new generation people. Otherwise, I think Nicola Schnorr remains the most stylish lady ever in Africa. But I'm trying to call on the younger generation. So go for it. So the last person I would give it to, I'm thinking of a guy. Who's exactly. I was stylish. wondering. So no stylish men. Um, they are. I'm just trying to think of a guy's style. Um, I think Dana Lord Gray. I'll give it to Dana Lord Gray. I kind of saw guy. that coming. <laughs> no, no. I, yeah, because I was trying to look for a guy who actually... Because for me, style is beyond just like having to wear basic clothes. You need to be able to push boundaries to show how stylish you are. So I think that's the only reason. Because I think he's very... He's outside the norm, obviously, and he tries to push different boundaries in his style. So I think that's pretty chill. Yeah. I think he's stylish, yeah. Dana Gray or Ebuka? I love Abuka's style because it's very commercial and very, very like put together for a man. But at the same time, any basic person will wear his feet and look good. You get what I mean? But then like, you can see the atom of personal style to it. That's the usual, just talking about earlier. Like you need to have that atom of personal style. Um, Abuka, every beautiful man can pull that look. But not every cute guy is going to still pull a dinner last look. You don't have, you have to have an extra juice in you to pull that look or his looks. But unlike Ebuka, his style is pretty commercial and pretty day-to-day -day for every other guy who has a clean look, who just wants to wear clean clothes. You get what I mean, basically. Okay, so you have counted yourself as one of the most stylish Nigerians. How can we check you out on Instagram to see if this claim is true uh, or my not? My Instagram handle is ZPXNSO, ZPENSO. All right, Z E X. No, Z P X for X, like X ray. Okay, X. so P pencil X X ray. Z yeah. P X. No, P, yeah, N S O. Okay, all right. Thank you so much for joining us. We've been joined Thank by Isaac me. Muhammad Paul, great. and this has been a very, very full conversation. I'm curious about your name, though. Isaac Muhammad Paul. Um,. I am a Muslim, but my family is Christian. So, Muhammad is my name. Paul is my dad's name. So, okay, you're Muslim, but your family is Christian. And yeah, Isaiah, Muslim. where are you from? I, this my, I'm from Benin. So, okay. Isaiah, A, I, you don't choose. Choose A, I, Z, E, Isaiah, then Muhammad, then Paul. <laughs> All right. It's been a delight having you.